Good morning and thanks for joining us. It is 10 o'clock Eastern. I'm Ana Cabrera reporting from New York and today we will see a former president surrender at a county jail for the first time in history. There's no precedent for what will happen when Donald Trump turns himself in at this jail in Fulton County later today. We expect he'll be treated the same as his fellow co-defendants, booked, fingerprinted, and photographed for a mugshot. Trump is among 10 left to surrender ahead of the deadline at noon tomorrow. Nine others have already been booked, including the man once known as America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Let's go to Atlanta and NBC's Blaine Alexander, also with us, MSNBC legal analyst Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney from Michigan, and Democratic State Representative Tanya Miller. She's also a former Fulton County assistant district attorney. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Blaine, do we know when the former president is expected there today? And I understand there's a shakeup in his legal team. Well, Anna, he's expected to show up at the Fulton County Jail sometime this evening. That's the guidance that we have from a source who is close uh, and familiar with the president, the former president's movements. Remember, of course, when you talk about the timing of this, uh, we're talking about a primetime surrender, essentially. This is a former president who's also a former reality TV star. So as we're expecting it to happen later this evening, we're not going to see him walk into the jail itself. We know he's going to use the entrance right here behind me that you see right there on your screen. But what we will likely see is his car, his motorcade, driving down the street toward the jail and actually turning in there. Now, as for the shakeup in his legal team, yes, absolutely. That's something that we confirmed earlier today as well. We understand that he replaced the person who, for the better part of two years throughout this entire investigation, has kind of been leading the legal efforts here in Georgia. Drew Finling, he has now been replaced with another attorney, Steve Sadow. Now, he is a pretty well-known attorney, defense attorney here in Georgia. He's represented the likes of celebrities like Ray Lewis, Howard Stern, rapper T.I., all of them have been clients of his. Right there on the screen, you see a video of Drew Feindling. That was when he was in the Fulton County uh, Courthouse on Monday after meeting with the DA's team. And so we do have a statement from Sadow talking about the fact that he has been retained to represent the former president. He says, the president should have never been indicted. He is innocent of all the charges brought against him. We look forward to the case being dismissed or, if necessary, an unbiased, open-minded jury finding the president not guilty. So that's the latest from his new representation here. How we're expecting to see this play out, Anna, is once he comes in, we don't know exactly how long he's going to be inside the building. Other times have ranged from less than an hour for Giuliani to John Eastman, who was inside for about 90 minutes or so. And we certainly expect that the former president's process will be greatly expedited, Anna. That was a loud truck that just went by. Way to go and power through there. Blaine, Barb, just your reaction to shaking up the legal team the day of the surrender. What does this tell you? I'm not sure. You know, there are a number of reasons somebody might part ways with their lawyer or retain a new one. Sometimes the, the lawyer doesn't want to represent the client anymore. Sometimes the client wants to move in a different direction. But, uh, you know, based on past experience with Donald Trump, it seems that so often what he really wants is a lawyer who can be a TV lawyer for him, someone who can go public and make the kinds of public statements uh, that can perhaps poison the well uh, and win in the court of public opinion. So that's one theory, but there could be any number of reasonable explanations to change attorneys at this stage as they're about to embark on a criminal defense. Representative Miller, Trump has gone on social media. He's calling for protests ahead of his surrender today. Are you worried at all about the possibility of violence? Uh, you have to be, uh, Anna, worried about the possibility of violence. We know what uh, Trump supporters are capable of. We all watched in horror the January 6th attack on our nation's capital. Uh, so we in Fulton County are bracing for the worst. I can tell you that our law enforcement partners, the Fulton County Sheriff, um, Atlanta Police Department, uh, all of the metro area police departments are, are on high alert. Uh, they're prepared to move swiftly should any sort of a disturbance turned violent, but absolutely, we have to be on high alert, understanding the history that is associated with this president and former president and some of his followers. Blaine, before we let you go, there are a number of other people who haven't surrendered, like Mark Meadows or Jeffrey Clark. They lost their bids to delay this from happening. So where do things stand with them now? And what about the bigger question about whether this case could still be moved? 
Well, Anna, where things stand right now is they have to turn themselves in by the deadline, just like everybody else. That's the word from DA Fonnie Willis, and she's made it clear that she plans to issue arrest warrants for anybody who doesn't come here to the jail and surrender by the deadline, which is noon tomorrow. So uh, Mark Meadows had filed uh, basically asking for a reprieve from arrest as he awaits to see whether or not his case will be moved up to federal court. A judge denied that, and so the latest is he does have to turn himself in or face arrest. Now, as for whether or not that request to be removed to federal court is actually going to happen, uh, then we know that there is an evidentiary hearing on Monday uh, to really kind of further discuss the merits of this, and that'll certainly be a good uh, insight into what will happen. And I want to say one word very quickly about security. You talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. Throughout this entire time, that has been something that's been top of mind for the sheriff, for the DA, for all of the people here. Right. They even had a place that was designated for potential protesters at the courthouse. We've seen none of that. We've seen nothing that is violent. We've seen nothing that is dangerous. Here at the jail, there are several dozen or so protesters uh, on the other side of the jail with signs and with t-shirts, people driving by with trucks. But again, no sign of anything that would get unruly so far. But we do know that there are officers who are, of course, in uniform and plainclothes officers who are watching for any potential disruptions, guys. Okay, thank you, Blaine Alexander. We'll let you go to continue with your reporting uh, as the other ladies continue to join us here. Barb, Rudy Giuliani, who already surrendered, said he talked to Trump yesterday. We also saw Trump put out a statement defending Giuliani. Barb, legally, is that a problem if co-defendants, alleged co-conspirators, are still talking to each other? Well, you'll note that in the bond orders, what the judge has required is that they not talk to each other about the case. And so if they're talking to each other about other things or even very generally, uh, you know, I'm, I'm supporting you, I hope you're well, I wish you well, those sorts of things, I think those are fair game. What's really difficult, of course, is enforcing that. Because while Rudy Giuliani is calling Donald Trump to wish him well, might he also be talking about the case? It's a little bit difficult to enforce. But I think the biggest place where it can be enforced is in Donald Trump's public comments when he's posting things on Truth Social and making other public comments. Because, of course, all the other defendants are hearing those words as well. So uh, I, I think this is going to be uh, uh, quite a tightrope for the judge and the prosecutor to walk to figure out what's on the right line of this bond order and what crosses it. Representative Miller, you have experience in both the courts and the political sphere. You know Fonnie Willis. What's on the line for her here and for your state? Well, obviously, you know, what's on the line for, for Madam DA is uh, the public eye watching her and probably what will be one of the most high profile prosecutions in our nation's history. Uh, certainly, she's got to get it right. Uh, no prosecution is ever perfect. Uh, it's We've described it as a knife fight, right? Uh, you you got to expect to get cut. You will win some, you will lose some. Um, you know, things will not always go the way that you plan, but certainly you have got to put your best foot forward because the world will be watching. Um, I, I think for the state of Georgia, uh, it, is, it is the same thing. We are uh, the epicenter of, of this nation's politics right now. Uh, we are a swing state here in Georgia with two uh, Democratic senators who we sent to Washington, D.C., our state going to President Biden. Uh, we are also uh, all, still red, so I guess we're, we're more purple right now with most of the state uh, leadership being Republican. Uh, this could potentially divide us. We see skirmishes already starting to brew in the General Assembly who want to make this a political fight. Uh, this is not a political fight. This is a criminal prosecution. Crimes have been broken, allegedly, and we have got to let our processes, our system of democracy, our separation of powers do their job. It is what democracy looks like.